The Lawrence Berkeley National Lab is a really exciting place to work. Uh, we are all about bringing science solutions to people. That's our official logo, and it's really true. Uh, we do basic research. That's much of what we do in Nuclear Science Division. The lab does a lot of applied research, a lot of energy research, and so you can go every day and hear a fantastic talk about something that's really interesting. In our Berkeley Applied Nuclear Physics program, we develop new concepts and technologies to address outstanding challenges and questions uh, ranging from basic research, applied research, to national security and safety and health. Our location is completely unique. We have the University of California Berkeley campus right down the hill. And what that proximity does is it allows the young people from campus to bring all that excitement and energy and they're going to solve the problems of the future. And at the lab, what we bring is the uh, technical infrastructure and technical know-how to solve really big problems. So neutron stars are some of the densest objects in the universe. They basically have a mass similar to the sun compressed into something about the size of a small city. And occasionally you'll have two neutron stars spiral together and collide violently. And in that process, you send out disturbances in gravity, ripples in space-time called gravitational waves, as well as form intense conditions where you can fuse heavy elements and send out clouds of exotic matter. So we've used our understanding of uh, you know, nature on its subatomic scale to try to understand the, the collision of neutron stars. We've used simulations run on the largest supercomputers that we have here at the lab and really shown that the collision of the neutron stars kicks out clouds of exotic material which have the right conditions to form the heavy elements. And there's observations now from the light from neutron star mergers that the simulations that we've done are accurate and these are actually the, the sites where we see the glow of, of freshly formed heavy elements. Heavy Arm program is aimed to study the nuclear matter under extreme high temperature and density conditions. Uh, we believe that a new state matter, namely quark-lone plasma, will be created in such conditions. The heavy quarks offer unique sensitivity to study such a uh, matter because they're large masses. But heavy particles containing uh, these uh, heavy quarks are very difficult to detect because they're short lifetimes. We need to separate the decay daughters that are only a few hundred microns away from uh, the thousands of other particles produced in the same heavy ion collision. That's why we built the HFT detector to uh, make this measurement. The HFT detector utilizes MAPS sensor technology, uh, which is similar to what we use in digital cameras. But our sensors are only 50 micron thick, and we read out uh, 400 million pixels at about uh, 1,000 frames per second. The result we find from with the HFT detector was all, is also very surprising. We see the charm quarks appear to behave very similarly as light quark quarks, despite their large masses. They show large energy loss with the medium, and also they show strong collectivity with the medium. Gamma ray tracking is a concept which was initially considered, at least here in Berkeley, with me and some of my colleagues here some time ago, uh, to enhance detection sensitivity for basic nuclear physics experiments. Uh, but soon we recognize that this technology, the gamma ray tracking technology, can also be applied to gamma ray imaging and with that to many other applications. It still is being used right now in our technologies, but our technology has matured enormously, much beyond the basic gamma ray tracking we developed many years ago. So we've developed a capability called Scene Data Fusion, which allows us to make 3D gamma ray maps of contamination and radioactive materials and environments. So we can do this from handheld systems or aerial systems. We've had a lot of experience deploying these systems uh, in collaboration with the Japanese Atomic Energy Agency uh, in Japan, in Fukushima Prefecture. We've done this both off-site in evacuated areas and more recently on-site at the power plant. So this work is important because it allows people to better understand where the contamination is located. We can precisely find hotspots, we can map large areas, we can track how the contamination changes over time. So if people move back and they want to be certain that the, the radiation is not moving into the area that they're living in, this method allows us to say over time, oh, okay, these fields are not moving closer to where people are moving back. One of the things that's really exciting about doing basic research is that it's hard to answer the question of where are we going in the future because it depends on where the big questions are. 
What are we going to do for sure? Well, we are going to find out how this uh, mysterious quark gluon plasma actually works. And in doing that, we're going to understand how many particles all interact together. That has applications in lots of places in addition to quark gluon plasma. We will answer whether the neutrino is its own antiparticle. That's huge. That will throw the theorists for a loop if it is. We're going to apply all these cool new technologies that we've developed for the basic research to solve real-world problems.